Hey guys, how are you? My name is Jonathan, and today I wanted to go over XREP Scene in 3ds Max. Um, now, XREP is very, very useful. I use it on honestly just about everything I do, um, especially with big scenes and that sort of thing. Uh, so, I, we'll just kind of get into it here. So, what we're going to first start with. Um, is creating some some files here so I'm gonna really just kinda just get this going here and create a box make a quick material here and uh, do something something plain here and get out of here alright so I'm gonna create a little box I'm going to create a sphere Uh, I mean, let's create a let's create a cylinder. Or you know, we can be cool and we create a torus. Big donut. All right, so I hate black, so we're just gonna material all that stuff up. So, all right. So now we got some ind individual files. Now what I want to do is uh, save them out. So I'm gonna save selected each of these files, <clears throat> and then what I'm gonna do is create a folder on my desktop, which is always horrendously messy so don't mind that <laughs> and we're gonna call this uh, we're just gonna call this xrep tutorial cool beans so we're gonna hop in here and what did I, what did I have selected there I had the cube selected so we're gonna say cube the first one uh, we're gonna do the spear Do the torus. And the cylinder. So this stuff's very handy. Like say you're working on uh, uh, like vehicles are really, I mean, I guess anything with a lot of objects. Um, that way you too, or any kind of big scene, that way you can just uh, work in things very optimally. Uh, for like in particular, say you have a scene with tons of objects or sub objects, that's really going to weigh things down. So when you're working, um, what you have here is you have your uh, your frames per second, which you can you can constantly view um, right here. Frames per second, we'll apply it. So what you'll notice too is like you'll you'll see this number just significantly drop. Everything will chug and. And so it's tough when you're working in heavy scenes, a lot of objects. So it's easier to just X rep that stuff in and work in that scene. So say you had a city scene and you want to build some light posts, you know, instead of having it all merged together and having it slow and chuggy, you can just X rep buildings and know where to put things and, and just work from there. So, um, so I think I kind of lost track here. I think I saved that cylinder, right? All right, yeah, I did. All right, cool. So now what we're going to do, let's reset this. Actually, you know what? Let's save this as well. So we can kind of go over, um, I'll just call this Geo. So I can kind of go over uh, multiple stuff too. So all right, now let's reset this bad boy. So now what we're going to do is, um, so say now we got a blank scene and we want to, you know, we want to create in here and, and have some fun, all that jazz. And... Um, we want to XREP that stuff back in. So we'll go right to references. And there's two you'll be using for the most part, XREP objects and scene. Now scene's a lot more reliable than objects. I personally don't like to use objects because if you're working in big files, things can kind of quirk out. And um, especially if you're working in production, XREP objects, it, things can get messy quick and people can mess around. And and um, it's hard to track things down. Things can change on the fly. Um, but XREP scene's a lot more stable. So that's what I rely on a lot. So we'll, I'll just kind of go over this one real quick. So now here's what we got, XREF scene. And what we're doing is essentially we're, ref I mean, we're referencing our scenes into uh, our current scene. So find our folder here, XREF tutorial. And let's get the cube in here. So now we got that other cube. And you can see that we can't, like I can't touch it. I can't move it. There's nothing I can do. Like you can't, you can't do anything to this. It's just there um, in, in visibility or being visible um, so so yeah and you can add you can add a whole bunch of stuff to it so you can add uh, we'll a lot of cylinders as well and we'll, you know, pretty much you can add all that stuff in and 
And what's cool is there's a lot of options to, to do just right here. Um, so say you had a whole nother scene and, and you just wanted the geometry, you didn't want the lights and the cameras, you can actually click on the scene and you can click ignore lights, ignore cameras, uh, shapes, helpers, animation, everything. Um, that way, like, so say you have a scene and you already have your lighting set up and then you reference another scene in and that has the lighting as well, you're going to get double lighting. So you're going to get problems when you render. You essentially have, you know, all these extra lights rendering in your scene and you don't want that. So you're going to definitely have to make sure uh, either delete them in your scene, your root scene, or just click ignore lights. Um, and that's handy. So, um, and then we'll just go through the options here. Obviously, some of them are very straightforward, enabled, you know, on and off. It's, it's either, you know, when it's disabled to it, it'll, it'll kind of red out. So you'll see that there. Um, overlay. Actually, I'm not really too sure what overlay does exactly. Um, there's a use, I'm sure. I uh, haven't really used it. Um, automatic update is, is nice to have. Um, now, if if you're like using one max, it doesn't really matter because when you close the scene, you're going to save it when you leave and then open up a new max. But this is handy. Say you have two or three 3ds max uh, windows open. You know, you got three different softwares open. Um, so, like, say you're working in one, you have your you know you have your scene on the other monitor and. Um, as you're changing things on the fly here, you can have this automatically updated. So uh, you don't have to, when you go from scene to, you know, from software to back to software, you don't have to manually click update. You'll have that automatic. And as you change it and save it, it'll automatically save it, uh, update it here. So that's handy. Um, obviously, display options, visible, not visible. Um, kind of similar to enabled, I guess. You can box it and just see it in wireframe mode. Um, and that's really about it now now another handy thing is is so yeah you can't move this stuff and that that can be frustrating right so say you're working in a scene and you want to move things what you can do is you can go over to helpers and you create a dummy object and and you can bind i mean i'm sure you can bind it to anything i bet you you can bind it to uh you probably bind it to an object right yeah you, okay so you could even bind it to an object so you can move it with with another object so that's handy and then it's not changing it in the root scene. So the root scene is still sit, sitting in the same exact uh, 3D space, same exact coordinates. Um, that's not changing in the root, it's just changing now in your scene. So if you're to update it um, in your root, you know, your position is going to be where it was. So, so that's very handy. Um, so yeah, you can obviously link it to anything. You can go back to unbind. Um, but dummies are always handy. Um, so we'll just bind it to the dummy. So now whenever we move this dummy, It'll move with it, and I believe scale it too. You can scale it, and you can do just about anything with it. You can actually, you know, you can animate with this dummy, and everything's going to follow. So that's that's pretty handy. And that's uh, and then when you want to unbind it, you know, you, you click uh, yeah, you click the file and click unbind, and you'll see the parent object displayed right here. So when you bind it up, dummy, boom. So cool. Um, now the next thing is uh, merging it into scene. Now I. The only time I really merge things together is like say I'm setting up a final render and I'll have that file be its own thing anyway. I'll save it as its own special file and that's where I'll start merging things in um, at the end of a process. Because um, otherwise you don't really want to do that. Now say, so say you're going to merge this cube in. This, this cube now is a part of your scene. So now, now you can see I can click it, I can move it, I can do whatever I need to it. Um, but now I've lost my XREF. So if I'm to update the cube and the root scene, it won't change here anymore. It's now a part of this new scene. So it won't change. But now I can, like I said, I can edit the geometry and do what I need to do. So that's, uh, yeah, that's handy. Um, actually, here's convert selected. Let's try to learn here what, the, what that's about. I bet you if we go to cube. Let's see, it already exists or replace it? Yeah, all right, let's see. So yeah, all right, well, I converted it back to yeah, the scene. I guess. So that's that's cool, all right, I'm learning too. We're all learning, smiles all around. Um, so all right, that, so that's that's about it with XREF scene. Um, so let's just remove this stuff. Now we're gonna go into XREF object and that's a little bit deeper um, and, and it can be, a a little bit nastier as far as keeping things um, tight and, and clean. So let's go back to our root here, and we're gonna xref. Um, and you can do. I'm gonna do the main scene because it's it's nice when you have multiple objects in there because then you'll be able to see them 
um, we've got the same same thing as seen whatever that's cool merge material but now what we now when we click this we can see all the objects the individual objects in the scene so that's very handy um, very handy to do so now if I wanted to uh, like hide one particular thing I can right click and I can um, I can well I can merge individual things I can delete individual things um, I should be able to hide it too make make certain things not visible I believe maybe maybe you can't okay so you have uh, you know you can add all right anyway no okay, okay so maybe you can't all right maybe you can't hide it I figured you could but that's fine so and then and the th same thing too in xref objects you can actually move things in scene so you can move things around you can edit them um, like I said things can get screwy quick this way so I mean what's nice is if I was to edit this scene and I was to say edit the you know the you know the, the actual model and I was kind of moving things around it would actually change in that root so if I was to manipulate things in the sphere root um, it would change along with it so so that's very handy um, like I said, you can go and you can merge individual things in here. So now this cylinder is actually merged in the scene, so it has no XREF uh, op option anymore. So if you, again, update the cylinder, it's not going to update in this scene. So, yeah, it's very handy. Uh, like I said, you can also delete individual things. So say if you only wanted a couple things in your scene, um, you know, they're going to delete out. So if I was to delete the torus, you'll see the torus leave or not. Oh, that's why I'm deleting the material. So there you go. Delete the Taurus and adios amigo. So, um, so that, yeah, that's about it. And then if you want to delete the whole scene, you just hit remove record. Um, and you, like I said, you do have the whole bunch there. Um, and that's about it. I mean, pretty straightforward, very handy. Like I said, I use mainly XREF scene. It's just a lot niftier to use. Um, and then one thing I will go over quick, is let's go to Geo here. And I'm going to delete all this stuff. And I'm actually going to XREF all this stuff in and show you kind of how um, sub XREFs work. So, say I had, uh, if I click OK only one at a time, I'm going to do cube, cylinder, sphere, and torus. So, all right, now we have all this stuff in here and it's just individually linked. Now, when I save this geo file, I want to reset, so I have another new scene. Now I'm going to go to XREF scene and bring this geo file in, which contains all the other XREFs. You'll see that it's linked in one scene. So um, this is handy. Say you have like a vehicle and you have like one main vehicle truck file, and that'll be your main truck file. But then when you merge it, now this is very nifty. When you merge it, it actually uh, uncollapses and you get all your individual files so so that's kind of nifty so say you wanted to you know get at certain things and, and you couldn't get it at it get at it from the from the main scene there you now have options to and, and, and essentially you haven't lost anything you still have all the the individual X refs there you just don't have that main scene so if you updated anything in that main scene that wasn't already X refs yeah you would lose that data of course but um, any X refs that that scene has would just follow along suit so um, really cool guys. That's about it. Uh, I tried to keep it as crisp and clean and fast as I could make it um, If you have any questions feel free to shoot pretty straightforward um, I like I said I use XREF scene all the time um, Especially working in any kind of scenes or environments or I mean, it's just it's very nifty because it, it's it's optimal workflow um, you know, especially if you're working with dense models or you know scenes with a lot of objects you don't have to you can work and only see that stuff visible you don't have to you know it's, it's not going to take up much much core so much of your cpu so yeah that's about it hope it helped and uh be attentive for future videos all right take care